Senator Johnson was right to point out this intelligence that showed us it was profiteering from the White House. Senator, thanks very much for being with us this morning. I want to cover three things this morning with you. I want to cover the uh, documents that you have indicating the money that the Biden family has taken in. I want to cover the media and the cover-up that has gone on uh, throughout the years on this subject. And number three, I want to get into the intelligence agencies, the FBI, and how they put barriers in front of you as you try to do your work. First question, do you believe Hunter Biden is going to get indicted now that we see the media coming around to reporting the truth? Yeah, I don't know what the Justice Department is going to do. Uh, I do know I don't trust the Justice Department. And I think uh, really what the New York Times and the Washington Post articles prove is how complicit they have been and continue to be in, in the cover-up. And, you know, quite honestly, they're not impartial. They are advocates for the Democrat Party of the radical left. You know, the Washington Post learned a lot of lessons from their coverage of Nixon. Uh, when you get caught in a cover-up, and that's what's happened, the, the media is being caught in a cover-up. They're being caught with their lies. What you do, and this is an intelligence uh, community technique, is you engage in what they call a limited hangout, or in Nixon's case, a modified limited hangout. You, you, you've let out just enough information, just enough truth to try and get you by the moment. Uh, we can't allow our intelligence agencies, the Department of Justice, the FBI, or the media to get away with this. This, this is serious business. This is unbelievable corruption at the highest levels of government and with our media. Uh, we are all being snookered by them. This has been a from my standpoint, a massive diversionary operation, again, you know, to try and take the American public's attention away from their wrongdoing, uh, their lies, their cover-ups. So before we start going further into the media, I want you to tell us what you've documented in terms of the money that the Biden family has taken in. Peter Schweitzer has been on this program and has reported that the Biden family has taken in at least $31 million from China Chinese officials tied to the Chinese Communist Party. That certainly raises a red flag in terms of the decisions he's got to make on behalf of the United States as commander in chief. What have you been able to document? Well, our report was based off almost exclusively on U.S. government documents and interviews with U.S. US citizens. And of course, it was all you know, lied about, uh, falsely accused of disseminating Russian disinformation. It wasn't. You know, we had Treasury documents that showed a very troubling uh, number of uh, wire transfers uh, that just detailed out a vast web of foreign financial entanglements. You know, specifically, we were able to document probably about $13 million of flows between Russia, between Burisma, between uh, members of the Communist Party regime uh, in, in China. Uh, but that was all ignored by the press. But, you know, they looked at our report in September 2020 and just shrugged, so no, no evidence of criminal activity here. Uh, no evidence that Joe Biden's yeah. implicated in all this. And these they covered it up. Uh, and as a result, they got Joe Biden elected. Now they continue to cover up for him. But uh, no, the, this this is troubling. Now we have actual bank records that uh, verify what we report back in September 2020 is true. Uh, the, the laptop is obviously a treasure trove of additional corroborating evidence as well. Uh, and unfortunately, our, our, our intelligence agencies, I think our FBI have been sitting on this information. And unfortunately, they were complicit as well in the cover-up. So uh, let me just, we also had emails, by the way, from the laptop way before the election in 2020. We showed the email of the quote-unquote big guy. Let's take a look at that email because this is an email where they are talking about dividing up who owns what in this Chinese company that they were doing a deal with. And the, the email is very clear saying 10% is going to be held by H for the big guy. Uh, and as you can see, it goes through all of the uh, the divisions in terms of who gets what. Your thoughts on this uh, email from uh, one of Hunter's partners, James Giller, to discuss who gets what to Tony Bobolinsky, another partner of Hunter Biden. Well, again, just to prove the complicity of the media, the Washington Post says, you know, there's no evidence that the Joe Biden's implicated in this. That's some pretty strong evidence. That's a contemporaneous email that's been verified that big guy was Joe Biden. There's plenty of uh, evidence that Joe Biden met because there are photographs of him meeting with uh, Hunter Biden's business partners. He repeatedly lied to the American public that he said he never, ever discussed yeah. uh, Hunter Biden's overseas business uh, deals with Hunter. Well, no, he just had 
he was just photographed with his business partners. So if he's lying, uh, bold-faced lying, that, again, is pretty good evidence that something is amiss here. You, you don't, if, okay. if you have nothing to hide, if, if there's no wrongdoing, with... you're honest. Yeah. He, he has not been honest. So there's plenty of evidence. I'm going to... I'm going to take a short break, and then we want to get into how the FBI got in the way of truth as well. We're with Senator Ron Johnson this morning on this blockbuster story of influence peddling. We'll be right back. We are back with Wisconsin Senator Ron Johnson. And, Senator, I've got your letter dated August 10th, 2020, in front of me. And on it, you write that the Senate committee that you chaired granted you the authority to issue subpoenas for records and testimony to certain agencies and individuals relating to the FBI's crossfire hurricane investigation, the unmasking of U.S. persons affiliated with the Trump campaign, and the allegations of the potential corruption of U.S. agencies. Tell me about the corruption at U.S. agencies that you see and whether or not the FBI stopped you from doing this investigation of Hunter Biden. Well, first of all, we actually had to issue a subpoena to the FBI to deliver documents, which they never delivered. Uh, they slow walked that to the end of the, the Trump administration, and we never got the truth. But we did uncover, for example, in the redacted footnotes of Michael Horowitz's FISA report, that the FBI knew as early as October 2016, and certainly by January 2017, that the Steele dossier contained Russian disinformation, and yet they allowed the Mueller uh, investigation to proceed and as, as late as, I think it was uh, March of 2018, the FBI briefed the Senate Intelligence Committee and said that the Steele dossier still had integrity. So, I mean, there are so many examples. Uh, obviously, the, the entire FBI uh, investigation to Donald Trump's uh, collusion with Russia, which was a complete hoax, was completely corrupt. Right. And, for example, uh, I think you mentioned earlier that uh, we were first offered that uh, Hunter Biden laptop by Mr. McIsaac. But again, we have to do our due diligence. You know, we didn't know it was this stolen property. So we did what any responsible member of Congress would do. We went to the FBI to report it, to mm. find out what they knew. They wouldn't tell us anything. What they should have wow. done is they should have told us, yeah, Senator, we, we have that laptop or at least a copy of it in our possession. We, we don't have mm. any reason to think it's not authentic. At a minimum, when the 51 corrupt former intelligence officials came out with no evidence and said that the laptop was Russian dis disinformation at every sign of it yeah. to basically cover up for Joe Biden. The FBI should have come forward and said, uh, no, we have no reason to suspect this is Russian disinformation. They didn't. They covered up for Joe Biden so that they have proven wow. that these federal agencies are in the tank for the Democrats. Uh, they helped uh, certainly undermine the Trump administration for the entire four years. This is serious business. Yeah. This is the this is the biggest, le this is the most corruption I've ever seen in the, in the United States federal government. That's absolutely extraordinary. And we have a list of Hunter Biden, some of his uh, business deals. We have Hunter Biden's alleged business deals here. All of this information was known by the FBI as there was an impeachment trial to try to impeach President Trump. All the while, the FBI knew of the laptop, knew that Hunter received $3.5 million wire transfer from the former mayor of Moscow's wife, knew about the $83,000 a month he was getting from Ukraine, knew about the stakes in Chinese companies, knew about the $5 million from Chinese oil company CEFC. All the while, as an impeachment trial went on over President Trump and a phone call that he had with then-Ukrainian president. Is that right? Uh, we have to believe that the FBI looked at that laptop. I don't know exactly what they knew, but here's what we know. We know that uh, Hunter Biden's business partner, who's also on the board of Burisma, is now a convicted felon. We know that he, Devin Archer, met with Joe Biden two months after the Revolution of Dignity in Ukraine, five days before Joe Biden made a trip to Ukraine, was named the point person for the Obama administration. A day after that, Devin Archer is named to the board of Burisma, that corrupt oil and gas company. A few weeks later, uh, Hunter Biden is named to the board. They collected about $4 million from Burisma. So it's just the timeline. What happened in just a month shows corruption is sleazy. Again, I don't know what's legal, what's illegal, but at a minute, minimum, it is incredibly sleazy. And I think you have to assume, as Tommy Boblinski told us, that Joe Biden as president is compromised. You know, why else did he cancel the Nord Stream, S, uh, Nord Stream 2 uh, sanctions? Why did he cancel the China initiative 
which is the Department of Justice initiative to try and investigate and uncover Chinese theft of intellectual property. What is going yeah. on here? I don't know all the details, but you know who does, Maria? Chinese intelligence, Russian intelligence, probably Iranian, North Korean intelligence. And here's the really sad part. I believe our FBI and U.S. intelligence agencies know as well. They're just not going to tell us or you, the American public. Wow. And you are an elected official and you cannot get this information. That was my next question. Do you believe that the calls, the decisions that President Biden has made as a result of what we're seeing take place on the world stage, Russia invading Ukraine, China trying to overtake the United States as the number one superpower, are Joe Biden's decisions compromised because of all of the money he's taken in? The China initiative, I remember a string of indictments under the Trump administration that I clearly identified people who were surveilling, who were spying on Americans and sending information, intellectual property data, back to the Chinese government. Is that not happening anymore? I don't understand. Why cancel the China initiative? Why won't the DOJ now investigate intellectual property theft any longer? Well, you have to be suspicious of that. And remember, what was all underpinning the whole Russian collusion with the Trump hoax was the media was so concerned that if, if Trump had any ties with Russia, that that would undermine a Trump presidency and allow for blackmail. And here you have a treasure trove of, of evidence that Joe Biden actually is compromised. He actually has all these, this vast web of connections in China, in Kazakhstan, in Russia, in Ukraine. And yet the media just turns a blind eye toward it. This is corruption at the highest level. And, of course, we played the soundbite of the 2020 debate where Chris Wallace interrupted President Trump when Trump was trying to explain that $3.5 million check from the former mayor of Moscow's wife and all the money Biden has uh, received. And Chris Wallace turns around and says, Mr. Trump, Mr. Trump, stop. We've got to get to more important matters. You also saw the soundbite of John Harwood over at CNN saying this has nothing to do with Joe Biden. How does it have nothing to do with Joe Biden when it's his name and title that they're playing on, that they're peddling out there to get money and meetings? Well, of course, it has everything to do with Joe Biden. But again, what this proves is how complicit the media is in this. We don't have an impartial mainstream media anymore. They are advocates for the Democrat Party. And, and now, Maria Cuadrano said, they're coming after me. They're trying to destroy me. They've been trying to destroy me now for two years. They, they lied about that both Chuck Grassley and I, uh, Democrat Democrats in Congress, created a false intelligence product accusing Chuck Grassley and I of soliciting and disseminating rush disinformation Leak that to the media. And of course, the, duty of the media dutifully complied and smeared us. And now, uh, as I'm trying to run for re-election here, they're trying to do the exact same thing. So if, if I hate to do this, Maria, but uh, I am being attacked. I'm being, the media is trying to take me out. I need, yeah. I need resources. My website is ronjohnsonforsenate.com. If you want us to get to the bottom of this, I'll become chairman of the permissive subcommittee on, on, uh, on investigations. Uh, I need your help to get reelected so we can expose the truth because the media will not do it. Yeah. Senator, good to have you this morning. Thanks very much for your work on this. We see what's going on and we appreciate your leadership. Senator Ron Johnson this morning in Wisconsin.